The dictionary definition of the term emergence comes from the Latin word meaning bringing to light. In this sense, it means the process of becoming visible or coming into existence. In its most abstract and metaphorical sense, emergence describes the universal process of creation that is both a very fundamental and pervasive feature to our world as it plays out in all types of systems. Emergence involves the creation of something new that could not have been expected from a description of the parts prior to its creation. Really, a process. These systems are then the product of a process of emergence that has played out to create two qualitatively different levels to the system. Emergence then is a process through which systems develop, or we might say, grow. During this process, unassociated elements interact synchronized to form synergies, and out of this emerges some new and novel phenomena that previously did not exist. In order to create some qualitatively different and new phenomena, the system must go through what we call a phase transition. A phase transition is an often rapid or accelerated period during the process of a system's development either side of which the fundamental parameters with which we describe the system can change qualitatively. Again, there are lots of examples of this, such as the phase transition between solid and liquid that a substance goes through when heated, but maybe the most dramatic example is the metamorphosis of a butterfly, from being a caterpillar to a mature adult. Not only does the system's morphology change, but the whole set of parameters that we define it with are so drastically altered prior and post the phase transition that we give the creature a whole new name. This illustration helps to bring us to another important theme within emergence, that is the distinction between what is called strong and weak emergence. Weak emergence describes how the emergent phenomena can be traced back to the individual elements meaning we can predict and observe higher-level emergent phenomena just by looking at individual components. In contrast, strong emergence, also known as irreducible emergence, states that these phenomena cannot be reduced to the individual components. Instead, the emergent phenomena are traced back to the interactions between the multiple components, so, quite literally, cannot be predicted in any sense by looking at the components on their own. Whereas the term emergence is of major interest in philosophy and art, it is understood in systems theory in more scientific terms, with reference to nonlinearity, synergies, self-organization and pattern formation. In this context, emergence describes a process whereby component parts interact to form synergies, these synergies then add value to the combined organization, which gives rise to the emergence of a new macro level of organization that is a product of the synergies between the parts, not simply the properties of the parts themselves. Emergent properties are attributed to whole structured collections of elements, where the emergent property is not an additive function of the properties of the elements of the collection taken individually. For example, the mass of the human body is a simple summation of all of its parts taken in isolation and thus it is not an emergent feature. However, human consciousness would appear to be an emergent phenomenon as we are not able to provide an account of it as some summation of elementary cognitive parts. The behavior of the system results more from the interaction of the components than from the behavior of the components themselves the added value of the whole that exists above and beyond that of the parts and their properties is a product of the way they interact. These specific interactions between the parts that add or subtract value from the whole organization are called synergies. Emergence is then a product of synergistic interactions between the parts in the system. Positive synergies arise when two or more elements Wetness is an emerging property of water something new only created by a lot of individual interactions between water molecules. And this is sort of it. Many things interact under a certain set of rules creating something above and beyond themselves. 
it turns out that more is different. This different property is itself a new thing, and that new thing can couple with other new things to repeat the process. But how can something be more than the sum of its parts? How do ants form the sort of cloudy entity that is a colony? By following a rule set that produces order through chaos. For example, let's look at how an ant colony distributes jobs. Let's assume that a colony should have 25% workers, 25% caretakers, 25% soldiers and 25% gatherers. Ants communicate their current job via chemicals. For example, a worker ant constantly secretes chemicals that say, I'm a worker. When ants meet other ants, they smell each other to gather information, telling each other their job and what they're doing. Both keep track of who they met in the past. Now, imagine an anteater kills most of the gatherers. If this isn't fixed quickly, the colony will starve. Many worker ants need to switch jobs, but how do you tell this to thousands of them? Simple, you don't. Our worker ant will still meet and smell other ants, but it will encounter almost no gatherers at all. It counts too few gatherers until it reaches a critical point and then it changes its job. The worker becomes a gatherer. Other ants will do the same until after a while there are enough gatherers again. The balance is restored all by itself. The actions and interactions of an individual are random. You can't plan which ant will encounter which other ant. But the simple set of rules is so elegant that a colony's many operations emerge as a consequence. Every living organism must interact with its environment. An ecosystem is a biological community that interacts with a non-living component of it. So we're talking about the soil, the water, the air, the climate. These are the non-living components. So ecosystems are how does the living component interact with the non-living component and how do they interact with each other and yes life does affect the abiotic environment and the abiotic environment also in turn affects the life they're inseparable